Well, I thought you'd be hairier. Like your dad. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> like a hairy chest myself. <laughs> Christ, do you know who you remind me of? Uh, who? You look just like my dad. Did he? Hmm. I remember him anyway when I was a little girl. God, isn't that mad? It's like seeing you both exactly the same time. Oh, I've made your favourite. Well, I hope it's still your favourite. And that's a clip from All of Us Strangers. Its director and writer is Andrew Haig. Hello, Andrew, how are you? I'm very good, it's good to be here. Are you feeling chipper? I am feeling chipper. A little bit tired, but chipper, but there's two good things to feel at the same time. And uh, congratulations on the BAFTA nominations. Thank you very much. For you, as director, best British film, best adapted screenplay. Do you secretly think about those things, or do you just, I know you're gonna say, no, 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 it's just, one day at a time. I mean, of course, you secretly think about those things. You tell yourself it doesn't matter, and then when the nominations are coming out, you're like, oh, God, is this going to happen, please? So, look, it's very nice. None, I don't think, I mean, you can't make films for this purpose, obviously, to get things, but it helps the film get out into the world, and it helps people see the film and hear about the film, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about it. Now, in asking you to uh, tell us about the film, I'm aware that when one of your previous films was discussed on the programme 45 years. Tom Courtney was on the show, and he basically, when asked the same question, which is obviously a good starting place, told us the entire uh, story, <laughs> including the ending. <laughs> and I was, I was thinking, I'm not going to interrupt because he's Tom Courtney, you know? So I know that you're not going to do that. <laughs> That's hilarious. So tell us about your movie and how you came to be writing and making this story. So it's based on a novel, loosely based on a Japanese uh, ghost story. Um, and what I loved about that novel, which is what I've taken into my story, is about a guy, mid-40s, alone in his apartment, lonely in his life, and he goes back to his childhood home where he meets his parents again, who died 30 years ago, and now they look the same age as he does now. And that starts a relationship, a reunion with his past, I suppose. And at the same time, he starts to fall in love with someone in his building. So plot wise, that's all I'll say. But it is this idea about all of the things that have affected us in the past, grief, trauma, both small and large, and how that lives within us. Uh, and here is a character who sort of needs or longs to sort of go backwards in order to try and move forwards, I suppose. Your central character is played by the fantastic Andrew Scott. Once you'd read the book and thought, how can I make this story? I know I'm gonna personalize it, and Andrew is the one that I, I want. Was that, what's the order in which things happen? I think the order is I don't think about any actors until I finish the script. I try really, really hard not to imagine anybody Precise. How can you do that? I really do try. It's A, because they might say no, B, they might not be available, and in some weird narcissistic way, I am all of those characters. <laughs> and so when I'm writing and it's in my own head, I'm sort of living the experience of those characters. That's how I like to write things, so I can sort of get into their heads. And so if I put an actor's face on that, and then watching them rather than being within the story. So it's just sort of how the process works for me. And then when I finished it, and we were going out and trying to get the film uh, you know, financed, that's when I was like, I think Andrew Scott's the person to do it. And it was the first name that came up with me and the casting director. It's a weird thing, you just sort of trust your gut. So does it, does it then follow that it's Paul Maskell is the next person that you go to, or was it Claire Foy or Jamie Bell, who play his parents? Did that all arrive together? Because what you've done is you've, it seems like perfect casting. I know this doesn't happen by accident, but you know, you seem to have stumbled into an incredible piece with four incredible actors. Yeah, I mean, they are so amazing in it. I'm still sort of shocked <laughs> that it managed to be such a good combination of people because this film does not work without that combination. Every single character has to work perfectly within that story for it to work. And I think Claire was the one we, we went to next. So I felt like I needed to get that mother character right because I needed to make sense that that mother made sense for Andrew. And we you know, had a lot of conversations and then we landed on Claire and I was like, that is the person. They even look quite similar. And then it was going to the dad and it's working out, okay, you need to believe that that can be Andrew's dad, but you also need to believe that Jamie makes sense as Claire's husband. So you're trying to work out these connections. And then Paul came last, and then it was like, okay, how does this work? 
I sort of want some strange similarity between Jamie and Paul. I wanted there to be a sort of connection there that somehow the past of as he grew up sort of led to what he even liked romantically. And then that has to all make sense. So it's a very complicated sort of scenarios that you're trying to work out together. And sometimes you can put all that work in and it doesn't work. But there, I saw an interview with, with Andrew Scott and he said, sometimes the magic just happens. Mm. And it's almost like there's an indefinable something. Does that belittle anyone else's role? But, you know, is there something that you, you know, a sprinkle of fairy dust in there? There is. I think there is. And I think sometimes it just doesn't quite come together within casting. And sometimes it really does. And I do think it is a little sprinkle of magic. I also think for this case, they were all so excited to be working with each other. And I think it's like going on a date. If you really want that date to work, <laughs> you're going to do everything you can to try and make that date work. And I feel like that is what was happening. They were so pleased to be in a room together and acting. They respected each other. They loved each other. And I really do think there was a little bit of sort of magic came out of that.